What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, we're going to talk about the 4070 Ti and whether or not it's worth it to buy it for mining. So we just got word about what the price is supposed to be and there's an article from Video Card saying that the new MSRP is supposed to be $799. Uh, we'll read a little bit of this real quick and then we'll get into whether or not it's going to be worth it for mining. So as a reminder, the RTX 4070 Ti is a new name for the RTX 4080 12 gig card that was canceled two months ago. NVIDIA is bringing back the same spec GPU with a different name and now it seems a new price as well. According to WCCF Tech, NVIDIA has informed board partners today that the price of the RTX 4070 Ti is $799, a hundred dollars cheaper than the RTX 4080 12 gig or 11% lower. In China, multiple sources such as X-Preview and Broad Channels now claim that the RTX 4070 Ti is to launch at 6,499 RMB, which is 700 RMB cheaper than the supposed MSRP of the RTX 4080 12 gig, or 10% cheaper. At 799, the RTX 4070 Ti would be twice as cheap as the RTX 4090 MSRP. The RTX 4070 Ti does have half the memory, but the CUDA cores are actually less than half. The only problem with the RTX 4070 Ti MSRP is that there is no Founders Edition, and as a result, finding this card at MSRP will depend on custom model availability. NVIDIA always requests that board partners provide at least some non-overclock models at MSRP at launch, but typically those cards sell out very fast, meaning that MSRP may be very short-lived. On the other hand, NVIDIA and AICs had an extra two months to prepare extra stock, so if, there, if these cards do sell out, then there is something very wrong with supply. So, yeah, I think it was recently leaked that it was going to be $899, which was very disappointing. Um, but previously, before you know, even, they even renamed the thing, uh, I was speculating it was going to be a 4070 Ti, and the price would come in somewhere between $699 and $799. So I'm very glad to see that at least we got that $100 off, and I'm intrigued to find out whether or not this is going to be a good buy for mining. So obviously we don't have any hash rates yet. The card has yet to be released. However, for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that I have something called a TPA calculator or total performance average. Now, the reason I created this spreadsheet was to basically get away from describing our farm size in Ethereum's hash rate after the merge. And what this does is take all of the specs from all of the cards and it spits out a number and that number is what I wanted to use to describe the size of my farm. Now, obviously, I'm a small channel. This hasn't taken off. But this calculator has come in very handy when trying to predict hash rates. So I created another spreadsheet uh, that was basically a prediction on what we would see on the 4000 series and the 7000 series GPUs. Now, in this particular graph, what we're looking at here is Ethereum hash rates or ETC hash rates. And surprisingly, it actually was extremely accurate in predicting what the hash rates was going to be. So for example, a 4090, we came in at 127 mega hash at 260 watts. And that so far has been accurate. A 4080, we're coming in at 91 watts at, or excuse me, 91 mega hash at 200 watts. And according to my calculator here, we'd get 80 mega hash at 180 watts on a 4070 Ti. Now, if you compare that to a 3070 Ti, uh, we were getting 80 mega hash at 200 watts. So not very efficient in comparison to the 3000 series cards, but it is still slightly more efficient. The big question is, now that Ethereum's gone and ETC is just engulfed with ASICs, what is there left to mine and what are the hash rates going to be on those others? So using all of these different formulas, I've come up with another spreadsheet. So what we have here is Caspa, Ergo, Kapow, which would be Ravencoin, Nexa, and Neoxa. 
as well as a few others. Then we've got Zellhash, which is Flux, and then we've got ETHash, which is Ethereum Classic or ETHW. So it took me a while to figure out the correct ratios here, and you can see that I've got the ratios listed down here. So what we're going to do with this chart is try to figure out where the 4070 Ti comes in in comparison to something like a 3090 Ti or a 3090. Now the big question is, you know, if you're still going to buy GPUs for mining, is it better to buy a 4070 Ti or try to pick up a used 3090 or a 3090 Ti? And, you know, it's, it's not a clear answer across the board. However, uh, based on what I'm seeing so far from these numbers, and it's still yet to be determined whether or not these are going to be accurate, but if they are, it does look like a 4070 Ti would be a good card to pick up for mining. Now, maybe not as good as a 4070. I'll go back to my uh, hash rate predictor here. It looks like the 4070 is probably going to be the most efficient. As you can see, uh, we'd have about 72 mega hash on ETH at 130 watts, which gives us an efficiency rating of 0.56 versus the 4070 Ti uh, is coming in at 0.44. So that's a significant difference. And the 4090 is more efficient than a 4070 Ti, specifically on ETH hash. And there's some reasons for that. So let's go back to the TPA calculator and I'll explain why we see some of these differences. So first of all, when you look at bus sizes and compare the 4070 Ti to a 3090 Ti, as you can see, the bus size is significantly smaller, as well as the CUDA core count, uh, a difference between you know, 10,572 as compared to 7,680. That's significant. Now, where we start to make up a little bit of ground is the base clocks and the boost clocks being significantly higher than we're getting out of the 3000 series. So let's go back to this chart here. And what you're going to see is something pretty incredible on CASPA. So if this does turn out to be true, we're looking at 991 mega hash at 62 watts, giving us an efficiency of 15.98 mega hash per watt. Now compare that to second best, which is a 4090, at 9.17 mega hash per watt. That is almost double, which is pretty incredible. I hope that this remains to be true. And that makes sense because, you know, the, the bus size is smaller, the memory bandwidth is smaller, but the core is quite a bit larger in comparison to something like, you know, the older 3000 series cards. Now, where we start to fall off is efficiency on memory intensive algorithms. So, for example, ergo, efficiency is coming in at 1.07 as compared to a 4080 getting 1.44 and a 4090 coming in at 1.315. And then Kapow is going to be a bit more core intensive. And as you can see, we're coming in at 44 mega hash at 235 watts, giving us an efficiency of 0.187 compared to a 4090 at 0.21. Uh, but we are still sitting higher than a 3090 Ti and a 3090. Now, obviously, the hash rates are much higher on a 3090 Ti and a 3090. However, that doesn't really matter as much as efficiency right now. Now this may make a difference if one of these coins pops off and you know we're not really worried about the cost of electricity uh, because profitability would be so high but i think it's going to be a very long time before that happens the days of ethereum mining are long gone and i i think we're looking at a significant amount of time if that even if it is even a possibility uh, next we've got flux so as you can see, we're sitting the lowest hash rate out of all of the GPUs we're comparing it against. However, look at our efficiency here. So 0.515 compared to a 4080 at 0.516 or a 4090 at 0.436. And then lastly, on ETH hash, uh, we'd be sitting at 80 mega hash at 180 watts, which is still slightly better than a 3090 or a 3090 Ti. 
uh, but quite a bit lower than the 4090 and just slightly higher than a 4070 Ti. So is a 4070 Ti going to be a good card to pick up for mining? Well, that depends on what you're mining. So if you're mining a memory intensive algorithm, then my answer is probably no. Um, now, is it better than a 3090 or a 3090 Ti? Well, that just depends on what price you get it at. So for example, um, we've got MSRP at $800, but we're looking at a used 3090 for maybe 800 or a used 3090 Ti for maybe 1,000. Now, I searched a lot of different places trying to get accurate pricing on these used, but keep in mind, these are used, they're not coming with a warranty. Uh, and if they do come with a warranty, well, I hope you have the original purchaser's receipt. And, you know, in comparison to a 4080 and a 4090, it really depends on what you're mining. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to be mining something like Caspa or Radiant, well, you have to consider the fact that these are moving to FPGA mining and eventually ASICs. So, yeah, it's really hard to say. Me personally, I'd like to pick one up just strictly for showing you guys on the channel. Um, do I think that you should be saving up or preparing to buy one? Man, that's a tough call. You know, me personally, if I was looking at buying a GPU, would I rather buy a used 3090 Ti or a used 3090 compared to a 4070 Ti? No. I would probably go for the 4070 Ti based on what I'm seeing so far. Uh, as far as gaming is concerned, it looks like the 4070 Ti and a 3090 Ti are pretty much neck and neck. It just depends on what you're playing. So it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'm very curious to see how this video is going to age. <laughs> but do me a favor before you go, hit that like and hit the subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.